why spinal leaf architecture is preferred over legacy three tier architecture in data center networks let me try to answer this in this video for the network architects who are designing data centers nowadays should know this already i'll explain in high level and in simple terms why would you go with a spinal leaf based architecture over the traditional three tier architecture what are the limitations in the three tier architecture and how spinal leaf design overcomes those good white paper on this topic from cisco i'll share the link in the description certainly you would know legacy 3 tier architecture design but let me give some background of that with the limitations and risks of course it consists of three layers of devices with different functionalities namely core distribution and access layer in some smaller deployments you can also converge core and distribution functionality into the same set of devices we call that as collapsed core and distribution this design has been used for so long basically you attach your endpoints or the servers in the top of the rack or end of the row switches which are called the access layer they primarily take care of the layer 2 requirements meaning you have all the layer 2 vlans configured in these devices but the default gateways of those vlans or svis are enabled in the so called distribution layer you also aggregate all the access layer into the distribution switches they basically terminate your endpoints layer 3 and it defines the boundary of your broadcast domain or vlans you can also have several pods as shown here for reasons like these pods are physically in different data rooms or when you want to scale out your existing access layer without further increasing your failure domain such independent pod architecture improves the availability since vlan boundaries are limited only within respective access distribution switches when you have several pods like this with its own access distribution switches then there is a need to interconnect these pods with some high throughput routed network that will be the function of core layer this used to work well for a long time but let's see why it doesn't work well in current data center requirements you know the servers are becoming more and more virtualized and deployed in a distributed fashion it means you have a hypervisor based infrastructure which are stretched across several data rooms or data centers in a physically different location and the vms deployed in those hypervisors have ability to move between locations with same ip and mac with expecting seamless mobility in the network side as well also current application infrastructure requires so much of east west communication that means there is an increased volume of traffic within data center lan between servers so all this require a high bandwidth non blocking a low and predictable latency a scalable architecture and network let's look at the limitations one by one you know the limitations of layer 2 designs the limitations in having multiple links the spanning tree protocols job is to disable any redundant l2 path so there are options of using multi chase ether channels to overcome this limitation it is still not efficient to cater high bandwidth requirements then from the latency point of view two servers in different subnets attached to a switch even if it is the same switch the packets go through distribution layer due to the gateway and routing happens in distribution switch the traffic path or the number of hops varies hence the latency varies depending on where the servers are attached then from the scalability point of view keep increasing the number of switches in the same layer to architecture is dangerous it will become a single failure domain and an impact in one vlan can bring down the entire network okay enough of the limitations in the three tier architecture let's look at how spinal leaf architecture addresses this first what is a spinal leaf architecture which is also called as class network you will have two layers of switches instead of access layer we call it as leaf layer where the servers are attached to these will be your top of the rack or end of the row devices all those leaves are attached to the aggregation switches in a full mesh way which are called as spine as you can see all the leaves are connected to all the spine but leaves are not attached to each other nor the spines are interconnected with each other for easy reference you can assume the spines in this case like a backplane in a modular switch and leaves are like blades in them packet from one blade to another blade will always go through the backplane 
So how this change in physical architecture addresses all the above said limitations? One, you implement some sort of overlay based solution in such architecture. That means physical connectivity between these devices are purely layer 3 based, which is called as an underlay and then use protocols like VXLAN to enable a virtual network on top of this underlay. We call that as overlay. Since we have pure layer 3 based connectivity in the underlay, you don't have the STP limitations anymore. You can simply use ECMP and route packets through any number of uplinks. So you can keep adding uplinks, keep increasing spine switches depending on the requirement. That addresses the bandwidth, the throughput limitation faced in legacy scenario. Then packet from one server to another server will always take the same number of hops since every leaf is attached to every spine. That addresses the consistent latency part. Also we can bring the gateway in the leaves itself which also provides efficient routing of traffic for the servers attached directly to the switch. It is easy to scale out the setup. Adding one more leaf to the spine and replicate the same configuration is simpler and straightforward. You can span VLAN anywhere in the leaves depending on the requirement without risking the broadcast domain impacts. In a very large setup, you can also add super spine switches to connect two or more spine leaf setups to bring dedicated availability zone concepts. To summarize, with spinal leaf architecture, you can achieve the below data center fabric properties. Any subnet, anywhere, you can deploy rapidly. IP mobility for the virtualized server environment, reduced failure domain by removing the L2 from underlay, default gateway everywhere which is closer to the servers called the Anycast gateway. Hope this brings some clarity in this topic and thank you for watching. Please post if you have any questions on this topic or any other networking topic. I'd be happy to cover this when time permits. Yeah. Thank you.